Hi, I'm Marcus, your game dev knight, and welcome to the Raidborn Workshop, where I share the game's progress and take you behind the scenes of game development. Raidborn is a first-person action RPG where you explore dynamically generated levels, experience ferocious physics-based combat, and build your character from a variety of exciting skills. If that sounds good to you, make sure to wish us the game on Steam and to watch the introduction trailer. Both is linked in the video description. This time I will show you how and why I manifested my whole level generation system into a single line of code, how I overhauled my castle levels with new lighting and effects, and how I created a cool Blender plugin to automate a very tedious task. And as always, it makes sense to stay till the end, because there will be a loot drop where you can grab some cool stuff, but more about that later. Now, let's head over to the coding station to talk about the Blender plugin I created. In a previous devlog, where I talked about how I boosted the performance of Raidborn, I said that I merged all of my materials into one to decrease the render load. To fully understand what I'm talking about, just watch the mentioned devlog. But simply put, materials define the visual appearance of a model, and the fewer materials you use, the better. The reason I needed to create a Blender plugin was that I did the merging process of the materials in the Unity game engine, which means that the models in the Blender source files don't use the new global material. Without going into too much detail, that required me to shift some values of every single model by a certain amount. This can be an extremely tedious and time-consuming process, which is why I created this plugin. As you can see here, it can do the job for me with a single click. And even better, it can apply to multiple objects at once. Before I started polishing the castle levels, I created some new assets, which is why we are here at the modeling blacksmith. In particular, I made some new rocks, because the old ones really didn't look very good and their mesh also wasn't very clean. And as rocks are objects I use regularly to make the ground feel a little bit less empty, it is important that they look good. Then I also created some new tapestries, because they had the same problems as the rocks and are also an object I use on a regular basis. The idea to use tapestries, by the way, actually came from the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, and I think they really helped to make those naked walls look a little bit more comfy. Then it finally was time to start polishing the castle levels. Similar to the last devlog where I worked on the exterior levels, I started with improving the lighting. As you can see here, I first tried to find a fitting ambient light color for the scene. Usually I go for a dark blue tone to simulate a moonlight color to make the scene feel cold and spooky. Then I tried to complement this by adding some torch lights, which I colored orange, which allow me to occasionally sprinkle a warm and comfy vibe to the otherwise cold and spooky mood of the castle. As discussed last time, there are a few reasons I can't use Unity's global illumination, which normally would brighten areas up that are not directly lit by a light source and thus would lead to a more realistic result. My solution for interior levels so far is to use a global light that has a very high radius and doesn't cast shadows. That way I can mimic the effect global illumination would usually have and prevent my scene from being too dark. Next I started to apply some post effects like the fog I'm adding here in the background, which is especially important for the cast levels to simulate dusk particles. Then I did some color adjustments like tone mapping, increasing saturation and changing the color balance. Generally, I would like to make the castle levels a bit darker to make them more atmospheric and also because I plan to add a torch to the game. And for it to be actually useful, the levels need to be pretty dark. In the end, my levels turned out to be a bit too dark, however, so that there is more work to do on that topic. But that's how it usually is, and as the saying goes, good things come in threes. First it's too bright, then too dark, and then just right. After I added some more effects like Bloom, 
I started the game to get an impression of how everything looks. Of course, as just mentioned, that's not the final result and there is more work to do. For example, the plume is a little bit extreme here. But generally, I think it looks cool and the performance is also pretty good. Now that I am back at the coding station, it is time to finally unravel the mystery of why I basically manifested my whole level generation system into a single line of code. And the answer is simple. You're waiting for the answer, but actually that was the answer. I wanted to make it simpler. I wanted to make it more readable and better maintainable. That's why I decided to more or less rewrite the whole level generation system and to apply my latest knowledge to improve the code structure and to also add some new functionality. After a lot of effort and polishing, I ended up with this expression here. And yes, you guessed right, this is the legendary line of code I mentioned earlier. And yes, it does exactly what it says. It fits a tile to an exit of another tile and basically is the core of the level generation system. With that and the help of a few conditional statements and loops, I can now easily create very readable code that generates my levels. In the future, I would like to further improve the generator, as I think some of the levels currently look a bit too uniform and lack some complexity and believability in architecture. The final ingredient missing to unleash the true power of the Infinix level generation system now is to feed it with enough content and tiles. But that's a topic for another episode. And now it is loot drop time. Let's see what's in the chest today. To claim your loot, just visit Raidborn.com to create your Raidborn account or log into your existing account if you already have one. Creating your account not only allows you to take advantage of loot drops, but also rewards you with an extensive welcome package. If you are logged into your account now, come back here and click the link at the bottom of the video description, which will add the honor crowns of this loot drop to your inventory. But hurry up, the link will only work until the next devlog is released. The new items unlocked with this loot drop are now available in the Raidborn shop and can be unlocked spending your honor crowns. A link to the shop is also in the video description. You can find more detailed information about the system in the email you receive after account creation. And now it's your turn to tell me your thoughts about the game and the video in the comments below. As always, see you next time and stay cool.